For example, the white center is always opposite the yellow center. The orange center is always opposite the red center. If you've got white on any of your corners, remember, just ignore them. For now, we're going to focus on the four petals that reside on the edge pieces. Each of these four edge pieces has two stickers, one and two. By rotating the top face of the cube, match the non-white sticker from each of those edge pieces to the center piece of the same color. So for example, the non-white sticker on this edge piece is orange. I'm going to turn the top face until the orange sticker is aligned over the orange center, like so. Once you've matched the sticker to the same color center, rotate the face with the matching center two times, moving a white daisy petal from the top face of the cube to the bottom. I'm now going to repeat this step three more times, once for each of the remaining daisy petals. So I've got the red center. I'm going to match that with this red edge piece here. Turn it twice. I've got this green edge piece. I'm going to match it with the green center. Turn it twice. And I've got this blue edge piece that I'm going to match with the blue center. And turn it twice. When you're finished, you're going to have a white cross on the bottom of your cube. Like I said before, don't worry if you've got white corners as well. For now, you're just looking for this configuration right here. One more tip to keep in mind. That white cross is going to stay pointing down for the entire remainder of the solve. We are finally ready to solve the very bottom layer of the cube. When we're finished with this step, the bottom layer of the cube will be solved. And as a bonus, the bottom face will be solved as well. But before we start, let's pause for a quick lesson on ergonomics. That's how to hold and manipulate the cube. With the white face pointing down, place your left thumb over these four squares and your middle and ring fingers over the four squares on the opposing face. Now, position the middle and ring fingers of your right hand on these two stickers up here and your right thumb on the underside. Holding the cube this way allows you to do two things. First, it lets you rotate the right face freely and easily. Conversely, swapping the position of your hands allows you to rotate the left face as well. And second, it lets you use your index fingers to rotate the top face. When you string these rotations together, you get two of the most fundamental moves in cubing. The first sequence is called the right trigger. It looks like this. Using your right hand, rotate the right face 90 degrees away from you. Use your right index finger to pull the top face toward you by 90 degrees. Then use your right hand to rotate the right face 90 degrees back towards you. With your left hand, it looks like this. Use your left hand to turn the left face away from you by 90 degrees. Use your left index finger to pull the top face towards you by 90 degrees. Then use your left hand to turn the left face back 90 degrees towards you. Mal calls this three move sequence the left trigger. The right and left triggers are the most fundamental moves in cubing. The more you practice them, the faster you'll get. We're also going to use these triggers a lot for the remainder of the solve, starting right here in step three. Remember, the goal of this step is to solve the bottommost layer of the cube. And to do it, we're going to search for white stickers on the top layer that are facing outward. We want to solve the parts of the first layer that aren't already solved, which are the corners that have white stickers. So we'll be looking for those and placing them one at a time. Now, you might find that the cube you're holding has a white sticker on the top face of your cube. In fact, we actually see that here on this one. You also might have a white sticker in this bottom layer. If you see either of those things, don't worry about it. We'll get to those in a second. For now, just focus on white stickers on the sides of your top layer. So you have a white sticker. It's on a corner piece. Corners have three stickers. Ignore the top one. Instead, identify the color to the side of your white sticker. In my case, that sticker is green, and it is diagonally matched to a red center. What I want you to do now is rotate the top face until the color beside your white sticker, which in this case is green, diagonally matches to the center of the same color. If your corner sticker is oriented to the left of your center sticker, so will the bottom face. On to step four. The goal of this step is to solve the second layer of the cube. When you're done, your cube will look something like this. These first two layers completely solved. First, search the top layer for edge pieces with no yellow stickers. Once you find one, match the edge piece that's facing towards the side with the center piece of the same color. When this top sticker is appropriately matched, you'll have an upside down T. So for example, this is an edge piece with no yellow stickers. 
The sticker facing the side is green. I'm going to rotate this top layer until the green piece is center matched over the same color. I've got my upside down T. So I'm going to look at the sticker on the top of this edge piece and see whether it matches the left center or the right center. In this case, it matches the right center. So I'm going to use my right hand to first pull the top face towards me 90 degrees and perform the right trigger. I've displaced the white sticker, so I'm going to use the sticker beside it, orange, diagonally match it to the center of the same color, and because it's on the left side, I'm going to use the left trigger to place it back on the bottom, just like in step three. If at any point the sticker on the top of your edge piece is color matched with the sticker on the left side, instead, pull with your left index finger, then perform the left trigger, and fix the displaced white sticker as you would. solving for edge pieces on the top layer without yellow stickers until L prime U R U prime L U R prime R U R prime U R U2 R prime now look, you're definitely going to have to memorize all of these algorithms if you want your times to really come down. But the more you practice, the less sort of clunky and the more natural they'll become. At this point, all of your corner pieces should match. If they don't, you might need to perform step seven's algorithm one more time. Now, rotate the upper face so that the corner pieces match up with the rest of the cube's faces. There's just one step left to go. All right, this is it. The eighth and final step. The goal of this step is to position the edges of your cube if none of the sides is solved just hang tight and we'll address that in a moment but for now if one of the sides is completely solved like we have here face it away from you now inspect the edge pieces on the remaining three sides they should be just slightly out of position so for example this orange piece really wants to be uh, yeah. Here. this green piece really wants to be here and this blue piece really wants to be over here to swap these three edges in a clockwise fashion you'll be performing a new algorithm it goes like this f2 u r prime l f2 l prime r u f2 to swap the three edge pieces in a counterclockwise rotation, perform the algorithm F2, U prime, R prime, L, F2, L prime, R, U prime, F2. All right, so what do you do if none of your sides are solved? Simple, perform the counterclockwise algorithm once, reposition the cube, and then perform it again. That looks like this. F2, U prime, R prime, L, F2, L prime, R, U prime, F2. Now you'll have one solved face. Point that away from you and perform the counterclockwise algorithm a second time. F2, U prime, R prime, L, F2, L prime, R, U prime, F2. Now your cube should be solved. And that's it. You're done.